So I am sitting in my car just at the foot of Benin Shoes. I've come up tonight to try my project. Uh, I've been working on an E10 project, or at least I think it's E10, up here for more than a year. I first tried it last year and I managed to do the individual moves. I came back in the spring and I started working on it again. Uh, I managed to improve my sequence for the moves and then link the crux section. And then over various sessions through the summer, I've managed to get further and further on it, linking the crux. And then finally, a week and a half ago, I managed to link the whole thing from bottom to top once. Wow. Now this route is around 8C on a top rope. I've only done maybe two other routes of, of 8C on, on trad before. One of them was a route of mine called Rhapsody, which was the first E11 in the world. Um, quite a long time ago now. And then the second one was uh, a route called Echo Wall on Ben Nevis, which is quite different in character. Uh, it's on a mountain crag and it's it's very serious, like you can't really get away with falling off it. And I didn't actually give that an E grade because I just really didn't know what grade it was. It just seemed kind of harder than things I've done before. But it's very difficult with the psychological difficulty to judge how much of the, how much fear represents a grade. <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough probably easier for someone repeating the route to, to grade it. So this one is around 8C and the crux section, uh, you run it out away from the gear and at the, the end of the crux section, still on hard moves where I do fall off, uh, if you fell, you are going to hit the slab at the foot of the route from around 15 to 20 metres and it's hard to tell whether you're going to swing in and it would be not too bad or whether it could be really really bad like life-changing injuries and it is kind of weighing on my mind i am I, I do need to take it seriously as a, as a prospect and make sure that i'm absolutely ready uh, because worst case scenario it could go badly badly wrong and actually on this mountain already <clears throat> i did fall and have a ground fall and break my leg and had to walk off with a broken leg uh, if you want to hear the story of what happened that, that day, uh, I'll link to a previous episode of my vlog where I, I tell that story. But I'm also keen to avoid doing that again or worse. The biggest problem I've had this summer with making progress on the route is the weather in Scotland this year has been really, really bad. So it's been very hard to actually make progress. But it's now the 15th of September and the, the season for the mountain crags is running out pretty fast. We've already had quite a cold spell of weather um, and so there aren't that many possible days left. Best case scenario, we get some warm weather even into October and it could be fine. There could be plenty of time to lead it. Worst case scenario is the weather just turns wetter and colder as it sometimes does in Scotland and that's it for this year. And you think, well, what's the big deal? It's just a bit of rain. You know, if you have to wait till the spring, just come back in the spring, it will still be there. And that's true. And that's exactly what I'll do if it, if it comes to it. But there is that feeling in my head that I have been, I've put a lot of work and thought and preparation into coming up here right through the summer and I would like it to pay off. And there is also the feeling that I'm in really good shape uh, for actually climbing this route and will I be able to get in that sort of shape again in the spring? Probably. But it's not guaranteed. It's never guaranteed. You know, I could get injured. Um, I might just not be good enough. On the main part of the route, you run it out um, through the crux section away from the gear that bit's about AB plus and then you get to a slightly easier section going along a flake that's on an existing E7 and then there's, a, there's an upper roof which is about AT plus in itself and that if, if I do it in itself for like just off the rope and I'm not pumped it feels quite steady and there is a decent rest below it but when you do the bit below you get such a deep pump that I have actually fallen off quite a few times on that upper roof when I've been trying to link the whole the whole route on the top rope. And that would be gutting if you fell off there on the lead. That bit fortunately is well protected, but it would mean that you would have to lead the bold bit below all over again. And that would just be horrendous. Like I really want to avoid that. So it's quite important with this route to make sure that I, I, I'm really solid and ready to, to lead it. So I've been hoping that I could go up and improve my resting position on that, that E7 and find a bit of a better rest. So I've driven up to hopefully get on it and it just started pouring with rain. Yesterday I was just going through questions that you guys sent me to address in this vlog. Um, and one of them actually, I'll just, I'll just have a look at it, was from, was from Lauren. And Lauren asked, what's your approach to mental difficulties in climbing? I've also seen you mention depression in your blog. 
and how do you approach this within your your climbing so i guess like mental difficulties in climbing could mean lots of different things i mean i've already done an episode on mental skills for leading in climbing i'll link to that here or in the description and also i've done a long detailed post on my own experiences with depression in climbing and I'll, I'll link to that as well but i thought i would just talk for a minute or two about the mental difficulties of setbacks both minor like it raining today and um and perhaps more major like something like an injury so i suppose my approach to uh setbacks and uh the challenges of pushing your limits and climbing and completing hard routes is really pretty simple in fact it's probably got more simple uh as i've gained more experience my it comes down to a central point which is that if climbs were not hard they would be easy <laughs> i know that sounds ridiculous but if climbs did not give you challenges and they did not give, give you setbacks they would not be so rewarding when you ultimately do them so although setbacks are uh, frustrating or difficult to deal with in the moment of experiencing them they are part of the process they are really ultimately what you're looking for in in your climbing or at least i am both the difficult part and the fun part is how you respond to, th to those difficulties. So for instance, today it's raining. I won't be able to get on my project. It's almost the end of the season. Uh, I'm facing that pressure of that. If I do get a window to lead this route, I know that it might only be one day and I have to take that chance and that puts a bit more mental pressure on it. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to take that chance. I'm just going to take any opportunity I get. Um, and if, it doesn't happen it doesn't happen and it doesn't happen because it's a hard route so i suppose what i'm trying to say is i don't try to eliminate um difficulties or or minimize them or or avoid them or ignore them in any way i just go with them i just accept that they are part of the process so that's the first point setbacks and difficulties are part and parcel of pushing yourself in climbing but the second point i'd like to make is that i don't think it's necessary or even maybe desirable to feel positive and feel really good about your climbing all the time i personally like to feel uh, like i've been kind of kicked in the teeth by climbing because that is what gives me the energy to make changes to actually make real changes in, in my training or preparation or something in the whole picture that actually uh, makes a difference and and ultimately when you look back on projects that you've completed it's those key decisions where you're like you realize if i continue with the current strategy this isn't not going to work i need to change something key whether it's how many times i come to try the route or or some aspect of how you're trying the route uh, or your tactics or your training or preparation or just your discipline and effort that you realize that you're not you're going to fail unless you change course and then you that makes you change course and then that's what was the key catalyst in making you ultimately succeed on the project i think that successful athletes in general are comfortable with sustaining a state of being uncomfortable uh, and that can be either physically in training or or emotionally as in being able to cope with setbacks but not let it dent what they actually do in other words you can feel shitty and feel um like your confidence is dented or, or disappointed or frustrated but that doesn't change how you respond so although i've been sort of set back and frustrated today and actually for the last month and a half um it hasn't really changed much in my approach it hasn't dented my willingness to keep going and keep trying to make progress through any means i can I've had to change my tactics by focusing more on my training because I've not been able to get on the route, but I've just felt, well, okay, that's what, just what I have to do. That's just, that's the, the constraints that I'm working within and I'm trying to change and shift those constraints and find other ways around them. But that's part of the whole game. Let's check the rainfall radar. People have asked me um, uh, what apps that I, I use to uh, plan my training um, and basically it, I just use the BBC Weather app or the Met Office. Yeah, maybe there's more on the way. Tonight, we're going to the board. Let's go. Cool. 